Since the recent spring of this passing year, there has been a growing sense of fear approaching a state of terror among the citizenry of the United States of the clear threat to the lives of the unprotected coming from the unveiled health care reforms of the administration of President Barack Obama. It was soon clear that the fears were not limited to reactions against the whispers concerning the Hitler-like health care policies coming both from the British royal family circles and their U.S. accomplices. In the meantime, the United States economy was falling apart, more rapidly with each tick of the events in the White House and the U.S. Congress. One had a sense of desperately frightened, once proud Americans trembling in a mixture of fear and rage at every turn of the governmental and Wall Street screws. It was in response to that pressure of injustice and outright fascism coming from the elected federal government that the American population spoke out in the form of a mass strike movement beginning the month of August of this past summer. They swept the nation, showing up in numbers and strength at virtually every congressional town hall meeting held by an elected official. And they were telling their congressmen, you shut up, you do this. And since August, we've had a crucial point of development within the mass strike, where the worsening conditions dictated by the October breakdown crisis and the continued idiotic policy folly of the president and Congress to sell the American population down the river has moved the mass strikers beyond their demands back in August. They're no longer simply saying, you do this. They're now demanding, it's either you do this or you're out. As LaRouche remarked in discussions with associates this past Monday, there is now a change in dynamics. You have a change in dynamics, and the people who were on top, in terms of making legislation and so forth, are now on the bottom. The trend is against them. The tide is against them. The tide has turned against Obama's health care and other legislation. And only stubborn losers are going to stick to it. Those who go with Obama's policies are going to go down. Go down in the polls, go down in the vote, go down in status. Unfortunately, if the president and those congressmen continue to refuse to change their ways, it wouldn't just cost them their jobs, but also the survival of the United States and thus the world. Lyndon LaRouche warned on Tuesday that we are now going through a new phase of the dynamic mentioned above, that we are now entering a point where we can expect a new social crisis as a result of a new wave of one to two million foreclosures coming on fast, and on top of that, a breakdown of the unemployment benefits programs which are keeping people alive. As it stands now, 25 states have already exhausted their unemployment reserves, with an estimated total of 40 states to be in the same predicament by the end of next year, if not sooner. Meanwhile, a record 1 million families have lost their homes in the third quarter alone, hitting not just those who took out subprime mortgages, but also prime borrowers who are comprising a whole new category of people who are being foreclosed on. These crises are expected to deepen between now and January, and if they are not addressed come mid-January of the new year, there's going to be an explosion, a social crisis. We're looking at something like the siege of Bastille during the French Revolution, LaRouche said, which will come on suddenly, and when it starts, there may be nothing you can do about it. In that context, in tandem with the Four Powers Agreement, which must be met between the U.S., Russia, China, and India, LaRouche put forth a series of emergency actions that must be taken by mid-January. The first of these measures to be taken is immediate transformation of the currently failed monetary system into a credit system, and this to be done through a Glass-Steagall reform of the entire global financial system a sifting process with the objective of protecting commercial and savings banks while writing off and throwing away all illegitimate junk assets connected to hedge funds and derivatives, and thus immediately relieving the U.S. government from at least $23 trillion in bailout obligations. The next emergency measure to be taken up almost in the same breath is the adoption of LaRouche's Homeowners and Bank Protection Act, which he first put forth in 2007 to avert the foreclosure crisis. The purpose of this combination of measures is to stabilize the situation. 
and afterwards, having freed up the government from useless debt obligations, it will have the freedom to authorize credit for new works programs modeled off the historic Civilian Conservation Corps of President Franklin Roosevelt during the 1930s and 40s. The objective is to get at least a couple million people employed in the near term in productive work oriented towards large-scale national infrastructure projects, such as nuclear power and rail. Young people in particular and the older skilled labor force will be key in this works program. With this measure, we get the economy moving immediately. We have three weeks to get these emergency measures enacted as emergency legislation to stabilize the social situation and to bring the situation under control between the government and the population. And of course, inevitably, this means we're going to have to kill the Nazi healthcare bill for the reason that it's jamming things up in both houses of Congress and also for its Nazi implications. So for those politicians who think the only way to move on with business is by compromising and passing the health bill, they're wrong. If you let this piece of Adolf Hitler-inspired legislation pass, not only will you infuriate the U.S. population furthermore, but you will have destroyed the United States. So don't assume that there can be any compromises. There's no time for fantasizing. We have to be ready to respond to the panic between now and January. If we make a commitment to protect the welfare of the people by implementing the above emergency measures laid out by LaRouche and instill among the population a sense of hope, we can turn the situation around. However, if that is not done, you can forget civilization. If the United States goes under, it will cause a chain reaction, and the entire planet, with no one exempted, will collapse into a new dark age.